Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Now, terrorism, random killings, Brexit, toxic domestic politics here and in the US, migration. All are big stories with huge implications for all of us. But one that has perhaps slipped below the current radar is the global scandal of the Panama Papers. First published in April, the papers were a leak of over 11 million confidential documents from the files of the Panamanian law firm Mossack Fonseca. It's one of the world's biggest suppliers of secretive offshore companies. The papers revealed how the powerful and wealthy around the world hid money, dodged sanctions and evaded tax. Over 200,000 offshore companies were involved. More than half are registered in British tax havens, as well as in the United Kingdom. And the documents put the hidden financial dealings of 128 politicians and public officials into the public arena. Among them, David Cameron's late father. He was shown to have used the company to set up an investment fund. Associates of President Putin were linked to the scandal, and the Prime Minister of Iceland was forced to resign. The list was seemingly endless. But the story ran out of steam, or did it? I've been speaking to two of the journalists involved in the expose, Frederick Obermeyer and Bastian Obermeyer from the German newspaper Süddeutsche Zeitung. Did you fish for it, or did it just appear? I got a message late one night, um, and it was from somebody who called himself Mr. John Doe and offered vast amounts of data. And we said yes, so I did not fish for it. It just, you know, it just came to us like a fate in some way. I mean, in the beginning it was like, for us, we couldn't really believe it because we saw that it was data from Mossack Fonseca, this Panamanian law firm. So for us it was, wow, there's the possibility to look behind a curtain. Well, you undoubtedly toppled people. The Prime Minister of Iceland is obviously a very good example, but there were Kazakhs, there were other sorts of people, but enormous revelations were made about China and the Chinese uh, establishment about Russia, about Putin in his in particular, but it seems that most of them made no impact at all. I think for me personally, it's, it's already an impact to see that there's a discussion going on. Even in China, we hear that there was a discussion because mm. in China it was really strange to see that how the Chinese media reported about this. In the beginning, they reported about the Western politicians being named in the data, about the Prime Minister of Iceland, for example. And then, when after some days we started to uh, publish our investigations regarding China, then the big censorship came in. But at that time, there was already a discussion going on in China, and people were already asking, well, if there are Western politicians in there, what's with our politician? But isn't the real truth now, and haven't you revealed that corporative life, corporation life, has taken over democracy, has, has completely dominated now great elements of governance around the world. And it's fixed, and they're in charge. What we see in the Panama Papers is that there has a, a parallel world mm. has been established where the powerful and the rich hide the money. They also avoid laws. They mm. really can choose which laws they want mm. to have applied on mm. them. So if they don't like a law in Germany mm. for, like, for their heirs, they go to Panama and make a foundation and no problem, no taxes anymore. But you see, what you did in a British, from a British point of view is that you made it very clear to people that our colonial dependencies are tax havens, virtually all of them and that uh, an enormous amount of tax evasion and avoidance goes on in them. And nothing actually has been done to prevent that. It's almost as if we've agreed that's the way capitalism works. For example, the British Virgin Islands have been the, the tax haven that appeared most in the Panama Papers, although they were named the Panama Papers. Has been and still is. And still is. And I think that's the duty of the politicians in the United Kingdom to really hear if the power to mm. change things. I mean, German politicians are not blowing the whistle, and neither are British politicians. We may have left Europe, or we may be leaving Europe, but the <laughs> fact is we're both bound by the same political classes 
who do not blow the whistle on the rich. We should all be aware that this is a topic that touches everybody, mm. one of us, mm. because if people, if the riches evade taxes, it is, means that this is money that is missing, money that is missing for hospitals, for schools, for universities, for streets. And everybody should be aware of that when he speaks about tax heaven. It's about speaking of, our, of everybody, one of us, in our everyday life. Friedrich Obermeier, Bastian Obermeier, thank you very much indeed for talking with us. I've been getting away with it all my